Hello people of YouTube. Can we talk 250s again? I've seen a few people put in OSDs on a 250 and I scoff and laugh and think, well, what's the point of that? I mean, do you really get anything from it? Mine's hooked up here on my um, NACE32, so I've got telemetry running into my Freescale receiver. I get voltages on my Tyrannus and it yells at me if it's getting low. What else do I need? Aside from the fact the the minimum OSD, even a small OSD, compared to this, is is huge. But just recently, I noticed some guys were talking about the micro minimum OSD, so I went ahead and ordered it, and it's tiny. Here's the minimum, which I hate with a passion after trying to use it on my um, APM on my quad. Here is the uh, micro mini. It's tiny, so um, I'm going to try and put this. On my 250 and use the um, NWSD software. The reason for this more than just seeing the voltage on the screen is that they've programmed it so you should be able to use the sticks to go into a programming mode where you can mess around with your PIDs. Now I find PID setting on the maze, uh, I mean it's not too bad, I use the free profiles and I change it slightly on each one and I try them all out and I come back and try again. The problem is when you're getting really close it's kind of it's sometimes it's a little bit wobbly and you can try something else and you, you want to really try and fine tune that so I end up always being really close to not quite there but not not really that smoothness that I want so I'm hoping by being able to install this I'll just be able to mess around with it and just get those final tiny little walls that sometimes pop up out of the frame but um, I thought I'd run through it and, and take a journey with me just in case uh, you guys are interested in doing it yourself. I got my board from eBay and as you see here it was just over £7 which is about $10. The seller is based in China and it took about 10 days to get one to me. Since I got this I noticed that Banggood is also selling these from China uh, a little bit cheaper at about £5.85. So odds on you'll be able to pick one up from a variety of places. We need to flash some software on it for the functionality we want and this is MWSD. Here's the home page and you'll see it supports all the normal software you'll find on 250 size flight controllers. Although it can also act as a standalone OSD if you just hook up the voltage and optionally a GPS receiver. MWSD is maintained by Shikra who is very active on the forums which is also very useful if you get into any problems, which I managed to. So I went ahead and downloaded the 1.5 firmware and having a quick read through what to do next, we'll need to get the code compiled in Arduino and flash it to the board using an FTD adapter. Once you get the code into Arduino, set the board as an Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 5 volt 16 megahertz with at mega 328 as I do here. There's a few small config changes you'll want to do in config.h as well, depending on what you have. For this board we need to change the hardware to the white spy micro. I'm running clean flight so I'm going to comment out multi wii and uncomment clean flight. Next I just do a quick verify to make sure everything compiles without a problem. It does and so I'm ready to upload it to the board, which is where the FTDI adapter comes in. Just a few quick notes here, you'll want a 5 volt FTDI adapter and make sure you line up the ground pin correctly on your FTDI adapter and your OSD. I actually did this using the pins of the adapter going into the holes on the OSD and so I had to hold it in place. However the board comes with some pin headers and it's much easier to solder these in place first and then just use a couple of servo leads to connect the two. I couldn't seem to find any official documentation telling me what pins did what on the board itself. But happily, I found a blog entry from Oscar Lang, and apologies if I'm murdering the pronunciation of your name, Oscar. He's got a really well-written blog, which I keep finding again and again when I'm searching the web. Anyway, he put up this picture, which I found from a few sources, so I've no idea if this is the official one. As well as this form showing a nice mock-up of the connections, which were really useful. I'll put a link to his blog in the description. I'm going to be mostly following this example, the only thing I'm not going to do is connect the LiPo directly to the OSD. That's because I've already got the LiPo voltage going into my NAS32 and as I understand it, the NAS32 should be able to pass the voltage information through to the OSD. As you'll see from the picture, you'll need to connect 
to the Nays TX and RX pins here around the centre of the board. I've soldered in two of the pin headers that were in the OSD packaging to make things a, a little bit easier for connections. I found the OSD config GUI a little strange at first because it's a bit different to the other ones I've used, but it all makes enough sense if you just go through it line by line. You can connect up the OSD and read from it, and this will give you the settings on the OSD as things stand. After this point, I mainly went through and turned a lot of stuff off, as what I need on the uh, on the screen is quite minimal. The important thing to remember for me was to make sure I got the battery voltage from the flight controller, which is one of the options. Next thing I did was hook up my quad and supplied power and blew it up. Oops, <laughs> real schoolboy error here, as I managed to reverse the polarity on the 5 volt in input. Uh, so careful of that one, <laughs> don't do what I did. I ordered another one, waited 10 days and went through the same process, turned it on, uh, this time making sure I didn't blow it up of course, uh, and got a video but nothing else. I was a bit flummoxed here, I could see the lights flashing on the OSD but nothing on the screen. So I snapped a picture of my connections, which looked like this, and asked if anyone had a clue about what this might be. Happily enough, I got a pretty swift answer from Shikra, who quoted from the FAQ that I'd managed to miss, oops again. And one of the things he quoted was about if you're using the FreeSky RSSI, then try unplugging it. I did that and text magically appeared. Apparently the very high frequency PWM that FreeSky uses in RSSI is causing an issue here. The general advice is to use a, a filter to take it down to a sort of analogue voltage. But to be honest, I wasn't too fussed about having the RSSI, so I decided to remove that uh, and remove it obviously from the OSD display as well. RSI wise, my Tyrannus pretty much bleats on at me if there's a problem. So here's the exciting part for me, at least. It's pretty simple to go into the settings menu. From an unarmed state, go mid throttle and your right while pushing the elevator stick forwards. And then from here, you can move around the screens using the two sticks and change and save values. You've actually got quite a few OSD settings you can mess around with, as well as the PID values themselves. I'm using the default font here, which suited me, although there were some different ones and, and bolder ones that you could select from the GUI and upload those to the OSD. So here's the final flight test, and there's not much to say about it really, other than it did exactly what I expected, which was good. The voltage I checked before on the flight controller, so I knew that was good. One feature I really like is the timer. The timer has an actual flight timer, which counts up when you're armed, so it's not just a case of how long you've been powered up which lets you have a much better idea of uh, your actual flight times you would expect. You feel okay? Yeah. Still black and white or better? Black and white. Oh. Weird. You up? Now it's colour and then it went black. Oh, I see. Uh, we're going into another field. Uh huh. Now it's colour, but it's split. You ready? Oh, oh. <laughs> You'll note here that it survived a crash quite nicely oh, and it even strange. gave me a little summary screen to say, hey, I've flown for this long since you crashed me. I just caught the I set up a low voltage alarm at 10.5, which right. flashed up correctly, and oh, um, I've got the beeper the now, in my nay, so that beeped along as well. So this is, okay. Might be waiting for us. I'll come and land, because I don't like people to think they're not allowed to So in come. conclusion, I'm really happy with this little OSC, and especially the MWSD firmware. It does everything I want to on my 250 quad, and it's about as cheap as you can get, even if you just want a voltage and a timer OSD on a little plane or something, it's easily adaptable. I haven't had the chance to make the little adjustments in my PIDs, but I really like the fact that I can that easily. Awesome. Nice so I highly recommend it. Thanks, and see you next time.